Hey everybody, it's your good buddy 650E here and today I'm at Sales BMW and we're here for another episode of the new bike build series. This is where I take a 2017 BMW S1000 RR that I purchased from Sales BMW and I add parts to it and transform it into something that I would ride on the filthy streets. Today's episode, we're going to install some amazing parts with the help of our good buddy and trusted mechanic, Zach. Let's see what he's up to in here. Zach? Hey, how's it going? Hey, good, buddy. What are you doing over there? Right, ready for another episode? I am, sir. I was just prepping for what we're going to do today. <laughs> okay. Uh, we got some awesome billet performance product uh, sprockets from Moto Millions. Oh, cool. So I was just reading up on them, see if mm -hmm. they had any great information. It just seems like they're like the lightest sprockets out there, the lightest front sprocket available. Oh, well, they look really so cool. So we threw the chain sprockets on a scale here, and if you want to take a peek, it looks like we're at... About six pounds. Six pounds, and we have a EK 3D gold chain there. Wow. Awesome. Lots of luck with these. Love these chains. Oh, they yeah. seem to last just as long as the 530. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see if there's any info on the rear sprocket. It says it's about 50% lighter. Oh wow. Made in the USA. Made in the good old US of A. We love that. Oh, they look really cool. Yeah, they do have a different look to them. That's for sure. Yeah. My good buddy Manny from Moto Million told me that these sprockets are made from stainless steel, but they're as light as aluminium sprockets. Yeah, and the strength, yeah. Mm -hmm. It lasts five times longer than a hard anodized aluminum sprocket. Wow. All right. We like that. So, should be putting on some good parts today. All right. I'll go get the bike and we'll get going. Just in the interest of time, you see we did a couple things behind the scene. Mm -hmm. We got the Samco Sport radiator hoses on. Okay. And uh, we put mounted the radiator back up. Oh, cool. Uh, nothing too crazy, but we're just running out of time because really, we have so much to add to the bike here. Yes. So uh, we'll get going in on the chain. We got to remove our axle sliders. So now that we have the wheel off. We gotta get our sprocket carrier out for sure this time. <laughs> Pulls right out of there. No kidding. And then we got some aluminum soft jaws in the vise so it doesn't damage anything. Okay. And we're gonna remove this sprocket and install the new one. Uh, something that's good to check, which I haven't done yet. Let's just uh, make sure that the bolt pattern is correct on our new sprocket. That way you're not stuck. Fits right on there. Yeah. We're not going to be stuck without a sprocket. Important if you had somewhere to ride, you know? Yeah, no kidding. We got to hold the back part because it's actually a bolt and a nut setup. A lot of times these are just a stud and you don't have to hold the back, but. Gotcha. From the BMW, we have to hold the back. Just go in a star pattern. Probably doesn't really matter, but that always keeps any material from warping when you tighten or loosen. Cool. If you go in a star head. And this should just fit right back in. So we'll get some blue Loctite, the semi-permanent. So I was wrong, it's just a regular torque spec of 110 newton meters. Okay. So we'll just set our torque wrench to that. And uh, tighten them up in that crisscross pattern. Looks pretty good. It does. Seems like they've used a lot less Loctite on these than they used to. Is that a good thing? Yeah. It okay. used to be a real pain to get out. Yeah. They got the uh, wire for the side stand switch is routed through this cover. Okay. Keeps it away from the chain. Nice. It's well thought of. Since we cleaned that nasty factory chain lube up right away, it's actually not that dirty. Sometimes these wind up really caked with grease. Yeah. 
Now you can see the front sprocket here. It has a uh, lock washer holding it on, so we got to bend the tabs on that. Okay. Um, usually just use a screwdriver and a hammer and then switch to a punch. Okay. This washer keeps the nut from being able to back off in any way possible because it's splined to the shaft. I'll show you once we get it off. Okay. Um, I don't think there's, it makes it absolutely impossible for this nut to loosen up. Even better than safety wire. Wow. This is the part that we're actually grabbing. It has this weird square on it. Yeah. For the rare bikes that make it in the country that don't have ABS, that, that was their speed sensor pickup. Okay. There's probably about three of those out there. Wow, yeah. So since we have the rear wheel off, we can't use the rear brake to lock this up. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, fight, it's turning the engine over, so we're just going to zap it free. As you can see, it wasn't much work for the impact no, on it at all. It wasn't. didn't really jar the bearings or anything. Far from the worst thing you could do. Maybe not the most ideal. Here's how that washer is splined, mm -hmm. and it's on that shaft. And then it, when, once you fold it over the nut, it's impossible for the nut to turn. Gotcha. Next up, we're going to go ahead and uh, cut our chain off. Oh. Uh, again, a couple ways you can do it. We're going to make some sparks, not as many as if we were just gonna cut through it, because we could just cut through it, which is what I'd do if we weren't gonna reuse it or if it's an old chain. Uh -huh. But uh, since we're gonna leave it for in case the person wants to go back to the stock uh, chain with, we'll just punch out the little rivets. All right, so we're just gonna grind the head off the <laughs> these. Zoom in there, then you can see it had a big rivet head. We ground them down, yep. and now we can easily just press the two pins out. And if anyone wanted to reuse it, a new master link would just go right in, crush the pins, and you'd be all set. Sweet. What the hell is that thing? So this is the chain breaker, and it also presses the master links. Okay. It's made by Motion Pro. They call it the PBR because it presses brakes and rivets chains. Okay. And then they give you this block, and you just line up the block with whatever you're doing so if you're pressing you'd line up the P so we're gonna break so we find the B here and the B lines up with break and now we can push the rivet right on through let me grab a wrench This is one of those tools that definitely helps if you have three hands. This is also what happens if you ever have to get your chain shortened. Like there's too many links in it when you buy it new and yeah. they tell you to take it next door and have them cut it down or something. They're not really cutting it. We're just removing a link and getting the right count for when you put your master link in. Wow. So nice and easy since we ground those heads off. We'll take this other one out so it's all ready to be put back together. So now that we're disconnected, we can go ahead and pull the chain out. And we'll put that in the baggie. It's Perfectly nice and, uh, good 530 chain, huh? Yeah. Might want to give it a quick bath uh, mm -hmm. just to clean off some of those metal shavings. Oh yeah, we're going to weigh that sucker. Yeah, and I think we got to put the, the front spot. put the scale on something a little more firm. But okay. We're going to pop it over there for now. Front sprocket. I think we got a spot right here. Nine, eight right and a half pounds? Eight and a half, nine pounds. So shaving off three pounds. Not nice. Too shabby. Every little bit helps, man. Yeah. So looking at our sprocket, you can see we have a large collar on this side. 
really nothing on this side. No markings that said which way to go, so we took a minute and looked. If we put it on this way, it just it's too close to the engine case the chain was hitting. Yeah. So we're gonna have to assume that it goes this way. Makes it a little tight on the chain guard, but I think we're gonna be okay. We'll find out when we're all done. All right. So then we put our lock washer on, it engages in those splines. Put a dab of glue on here. We'll just hand tighten this for now. We'll put the rear wheel on and put the chain on and then we'll come back and torque this. Okay. That way we can use the rear brake to hold everything in place. So up next we can put the rear wheel back in. Okay, so we opened up our master link. You want to make sure you got four of the O-rings. Okay. This is what keeps all the grease in and what makes it an O-ring chain. Comes with a little bit of grease. Don't eat it. It's something I know. Yeah. We'll just put the grease on the pins because this is what keeps your chain lubricated for the life of it. Oh, wow. That's what's inside of each and every one of these. Okay. And then we'll put an O-ring on each one. I don't really have any writing that needs to face up or down, so... Slip that together there. I still got enough grease on my fingers. We'll put the O-rings on this side. And now we have to press it together. Because all O-ring chains this link is press type. Hopefully it'll balance just long enough to get the tool up there. So we're going to switch our block around so the P lines up. For press. Yep, for press. Where's that P at? So that's going to fit on there. This hook's on the back side. Press it together. Now you don't want to go too far. Okay. So the question is, how do you keep from going too far? Uh, some chains will come with a little spacer that sits in here so you don't squish the O-rings too much. This one didn't, obviously. So what we're going to do is press it on a fair amount, and then I'll measure one of these, and we'll measure that one and get it as close as we can. Gotcha. Let's see where we're at on these. 5.2. 5.23 so we gotta go just a little bit more and then I'll be happy with that it's real easy to overdo it because yeah. you think you're like oh, I just want to go super tight but then it'll just split on you and then it's really not safe to ride with a chain that the rivets split on I think that's going to be good for us then. Perfect. Both of them over 5.25. Nice. Chain still flexes there, nothing's bound. Uh, so now we're good. We'll set the tension and go ahead and torque our front nut, reassemble, and move on to the next stuff. All right. We've got to bend that lock tab, lock tab back over. As you can see right now, it's flat. It's not locking anything. Mm -hmm. So we kind of just have to see if we can find a way, good way to get behind there to start bending it. And then we'll go straight across from it. Bend this up. All right, and as you can see, it looks just like before. Yes, it does. Washer is locked that in place. Sweet. I'm gonna pop this back in neutral. Spin it, make sure that there's no clearance issues, the chain's not hitting the frame, mm -hmm. not hitting the swing arm, we're not catching anything, it sounds fine. 
That looks super light back there. All right, so we got our cover back on, shifter hook back up. Uh, we're in neutral, we're just gonna double check the chain tension. Looks like we make it down past seven, up to three, so right at 40, 45. A little bit on the tight side. It'll stretch out though real quick, should wind up right where we want it. Okay. We'll double check it again before we hand it over. Otherwise, that's it for today, I think. Yeah. Get it off the bench and move on. Next video should be pretty exciting. I think we'll get to hear it run. All right. All right, Zach. Shave some more weight off. Nice. Made it look a little bit better. Indeed. I think we're uh, well on the way. Yes, sir. We'll catch you guys next time. Thanks All right, for Zach. watching. Thanks, buddy. Wow, Zach did an amazing job today installing the chain and sprockets onto your 2017 BMW S1000RR. The bike is coming along very nicely. And uh, we're getting to the point we're about to wrap this series up. So yeah, you can still join my Patreon page and support the series, the New Bike Build series. The links to that are in the description. Hit the like button if you like this video. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking subscribe. The new videos are always uploaded to my channel. Stay tuned for more, and as always, thanks for viewing. We'll catch you next time from Sills BMW.